Let's talk about the difference between a rent by the room model and a midterm rental model. Because I have a lot of people complete the two and I also have a lot of people that aren't sure which model they want to go with. So a midterm rental is a rental that is furnished and that you are renting for 30 days or more. And you are renting it to one party. So you have one lease and a rent by the room is rented by multiple different parties and you're renting out on the room level. So the lease is going out on the room level. Both Airbnb and Furnish Finder have modified their sites to accommodate for this room rental. And Furnish Finder has stats embedded into the site that allow you to look at your location, how many people are renting, and then the percentage that they're renting based off of a whole house or a room. So that is under the owner resources on Furnish Finder. That said, when people self-property manage, I tend to think that they make the most with a rent by the room lease, assuming that they can keep those rooms rented. The reason for that is let's say you have a three bedroom house, you can collectively charge more by renting out each room than you would if you rented out the entire home together. So you will make more money probably with a rent by the room. And the only reason why I'm qualifying that with a probably is because again, you have to stay rented and you're gonna have more vacancies in a rent by the room because you have multiple parties coming in and out. Whereas a midterm rental, you are renting out the entire space to one party. And so you're probably not going to have as much vacancy. While some of my clients do the rent by the room model, we actually do not do the rent by the room model. And there are a couple of reasons for this because of that vacancy issue where you're trying to fill in the gaps. But more importantly, because when you have a midterm rental and everybody's just signing one lease, it's kind of understood within that party that they work out their own issues. They don't bring them to you because they've all collectively agreed to live together. And so that's the understanding. But, but when you do a rent by the room, people have agreed to live with other people, but they don't know those people and they all have equal footing. So if there's an internal conflict over the kitchen or the laundry room or dominance of the living room fireplace, they're going to push it to you and you're gonna to have to deal with it. And so that's not very appealing to me because I want my investments to be as passive as possible. And a rent by the room is definitely going to require more interaction with the tenants and more marketing efforts because you're constantly gonna be trying to fill in those vacancies. So that is why I don't do rent by the room for myself. The other issue I think with the rent by the room is that you need to think about the tenant pool. And I think part of the reason why people like the midterm rental space is because the tenant pool is pretty attractive. It's not just traveling nurses, but it's remote workers. Sometimes it's seniors. Sometimes it's people getting divorced. Sometimes it's people waiting for a house to be built. So there's a lot of diversity in your tenant pool, but they tend to be maybe a little bit more mature, a little bit more established in their careers, a little bit quieter. So they're kind of an easier tenant pool for the most part. When you are an easier tenant pool and you have a little bit of money, you also have some choices. And so I'm inclined to think that that tenant pool that is making six figures or more or, or living quite comfortably is not seeking out a property where they have roommates that they don't know. That actually seems like a reversion back to college. So it's one thing if you have a large house and somebody's gonna rent out the entire property with their friends that they've vetted. So AKA a bunch of traveling nurses are gonna come out together and rent together. It is a totally different assumption to think that a professional, someone that's made a little bit of money, wants to just live isolated behind a room door and then on the other side are a bunch of people that he or she does not know. And so now you have all the problems associated with roommates. And with that model, you have to assume that that professional is more motivated by saving money than they are by having privacy. And I'm just not convinced that's the case. So the reason why I'm not convinced of that is that when you're making a little bit of money, you're comfortable, etc. you would probably rather pay a little bit more to come and go as you like, use the washer and dryers you like, have the kitchen set up the way you like, watch whatever TV in the living room that you would like, and you don't want to deal with a bunch of roommates don't know. And I, th I think as a female, it's even more concerning. Case in point, when I graduated college, I went to Alaska for six months and became a kayak guide. And the kayak company that I worked for sourced the housing and we all lived there with different roommates. Well, one of the guys that I lived with would enter my room all the time, would want to talk to me, was kind of inappropriate with his touching. It was not the end of the world, but it was annoying and it did feel a little threatening. And so 
I have had that experience. I assume many women have had that experience. And so a rent by the room definitely would not appeal to me for that reason amongst others. So I think in particular, unfurnished minor, it's not the best idea. A lot of nurses tend to be female, and I think a lot of nurses don't want a rent by the room situation. 